My name is Stéphane Dujeric. I'm the spokesman for the Secretary General of the United Nations. I've been at the United Nations for almost 18 years now. Uh, I've been spokesman since 2014 for Ban Ki-moon and then for Antonio Guterres. And before that, I was spokesman for Kofi Annan for 2005 and 2006. I think I have the best job in the building. Uh, I'm responsible for speaking to the press on behalf of the Secretary General. Every day I hold a press briefing in this very room for the journalists that are accredited to the United Nations, about 200 uh, journalists. So we're here in an act of transparency in a way to let them know what the UN is doing and to give them a chance to ask us questions, uh, sometimes tough questions, pertinent questions, uh, in incisive questions, and our job is to answer them. I started off uh, after university, I kind of fell into journalism. I worked for about nine years for ABC News in the United States, uh, American Broadcasting Company. I started off with them in Paris as a producer and then in London and then in New York. And then in 99, someone said, hey, there's a job opening at the UN uh, in the spokesman's office. They need somebody with a bit of TV experience. And I kind of applied and I got the job. And I joined Kofi Annan's team in 2000. Uh, as an associate spokesman, and I've never left. 18 General Assemblies I've covered. Uh, it's a tremendous privilege to be able to be in the General Assembly Hall on that first day, when almost every world leader is present, sitting in one room. And that really, to me, it illustrates what the United Nations is about. It is about bringing countries together to try to solve the world's problem. It doesn't always work, sometimes it fails, but we always try. And it is the one place that can convene all these leaders. And there isn't a day that I don't go into the General Assembly and I really feel that it's a very, very special place. Now, during those two weeks of the high-level week, it's been described as sort of the, the World Cup of diplomacy. Uh, it's fascinating to see you, you walk through the halls and you're like, oh, there's a president of Zimbabwe. Oh, there's a president of the United States. And you, all of a sudden, all these world leaders are just kind of bumping into each other. Sometimes they look a little lost because for the first time, they're not the center of attention. They have to share the stage with 193 other world leaders. So I, I tend to think it's sometimes a bit of a humbling experience for some of them. but. It is a unique, unique time in the United Nations. We have hundreds, if not thousands, of bilateral meetings that take place uh, between the Secretary General and world leaders, and between world leaders uh, themselves. If you go down to the lobby, the visitors' lobby during the General Assembly, they have basically set up little, uh, almost confessional cubicles where world leaders can just meet for five, ten minutes, uh, sometimes away from the glare of the journalists, and it's what we like to call to the diplomatic speed dating, uh, but it's a big part of, of what happens here at the UN during the General Assembly. That it works. You know, I think there is no more complex uh, summit or operation uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, our protocol officers have to deal with 193 delegations, some of which don't even want to be seen next to each other, uh, let alone in the, next, uh, in the same room. They, there's a big lunch on the first day. They have to deal with dietary requirements. They have to deal with security, uh, with the press. Uh, but it seems to work every year. It works and they come back the following year. So it's always a good sign. It's a true privilege to be able to work uh, at the United Nations. It's a place where I personally find, what I find the most exciting is the intellectual diversity of my colleagues. You get to work with people from, by definition, all over the world who bring different perspectives, different ways of thinking, different personal experiences to try to solve problems. And that's hard to replicate, I think, in, in the private sector. So it's, it's really a, a unique place. But I would have to say that 
you don't have to work at the United, United Nations to do the work of the United Nations. The work of the United Nations is all our responsibility to build a better world, a more equitable world, where everyone has a voice, where girls are entitled to education, where people have access to health care, where human rights are respected. And all of those things you can do at the United Nations, but you can do as part of civil society, and you could do it as part of the private sector or in academia.